Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Finally, I've made it back from my travels around the US and A, and God, we've got a cracking show lined up today where we're going to be discussing all things tech related from the Tour de France. Yes. It's a Tour de France tech special. Plus, we've got all your other favourite things, like your best comments from last week and the bike vault. Let's, let's get to it. Let's do it. Right, Ollie, before we kick things off, I've actually got a little present for you from um, myself and Chloe from our honeymoon, right? Oh, that's amazing. You, you ready for this? Yeah, it's from America. It's from, it's from America. Oh, wow. It's from Hollywood, nonetheless. Check this out. It's for you. Wow. It says uh, Best Doctor on it. It was an Oscar. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he seems slightly underwhelmed, actually, by it. Well, I'm the, I'm the only person with a doctorate here. You are the only person. I did ask if they'd do you one of those. Best and like, only. I asked if they'd do you one of those stars on the sidewalk, but they said no. That's amazing. We'll, yeah. we'll put that in the set somewhere. Thanks. Oh, Thanks we'll man. tuck it there for now. Um, so, anyway, the big French bike race is well and truly underway. I've obviously not been here, so I've been catching up with it on GCN, Plus, which has been incredible. Um, but we thought we'd run through some of our tech observations. Wasn't yes, it? this week is a Tour de France tech special because there's so much to talk about. There's been loads of new bikes, interesting tech, and just cool observations. Um, any reason why you're sort of dressed like that? Because it's faster. Is it? Yeah. All the specialised riders were like wearing aero snoods like this. Okay. Is even making me talk faster right now. <laughs> How long are you planning on keeping this thing on? Whole show? Can you do that it, whole show? It, like? I'm getting quite warm. Right, well, while the aero snood might be faster, it did spark some debate online and lots of people have been laughing at it. And we've seen countless memes about it as well. So here are some of our favourites. <laughs> Do you know what this reminds me of? Have Go you on. seen Monty Python and The Life of Brian? No. It's where, like, Brian's mum, when she's like, He's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy. That's where it reminds me of. Anyone that's watched that film will know. Anyway. I'll take your word for it. I actually think these are ridiculous, and I think that this is something I would love to see the UCI actually ban. For once. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind you on that. Yeah. We should probably have a poll about this, shouldn't we? I think, it, you know, the UCI ban stuff often to preserve the aesthetic of the sport, and I think... Okay. Yes. Simple. Okay, well, let's have a poll over Gladly. on the GCN app. Let's do should it. Should the Aero Snood be banned by the UCI? Simple on this, yes or no. You can head over to the GCN app and vote on our poll. Now, on the subject of the sort of snoods, I guess the theory behind it is to try and improve the aerodynamics. Although... I'm not entirely sure how that works, seeing as it's placed underneath the helmet, but in theory, I guess someone's tested it. Well, you know, fabric's more aerodynamic than skin, isn't it? Like, that's why, you, yeah. you know, they try and cover their legs with long socks and they cover their arms and their hands and everything. Yeah. So cover the face. Yeah. Why not? You know, your chin and your neck. Like, yeah. Go, go all in. So you don't think it was that the helmet was developed for Remco and they just thought it didn't fit the other riders, so they had to use it to make the helmet fit. I mean, that's, that is also <laughs> a possibility, but this was the, the snood being worn by all the specialised sponsored uh, riders underneath their new TT helmet. Although, interestingly, the one rider that didn't wear the new helmet, yeah. Yves Lampin, who won the stage. <laughs> Maybe the rest of them just overheated. He wore, with the, he wore the he wore the new helmet, the old style helmet. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, Ineos got some new helmets as well from Cask, and I'm not sure the name of it, but we have spotted Garrett Thomas riding in it. Yeah. yeah. So this has replaced the Protone that yeah. they, they used to wear. Um, it looks as objective. I, I actually quite like the look of the old Protone more. I think, but yeah. presumably assume, there's yeah. there's an improvement that they've tested and measured. Who knows? Yeah. So I was on the ground at the Tour de France and managed to get his hands on all the latest hot tech and, and bikes. So make sure you subscribe and hit notifications so you don't miss uh, when those videos come out because we're going to have a detailed look at, well, the new Trek uh, Madon. Yep. Um, Ganna's, Ganna's TT, TT bike. bike. What yeah. else have we got? Um, Tali Pogaccia's Prototipo con Nago. Oh, yes. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. We've got that. And... Um, We've actually got a pro bike video of that's coming out this Saturday as oh, well. Oh, we do, yeah. Nice, so, yeah. close, in-depth look at that. So, yeah. as you said, if you want to see that video, well, you need to subscribe to GCN Tech, hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss out when that video goes live. We can also tell you there was a new uh, canyon that Sai spotted. Oh, yeah. Now, this is as of yet unnamed. Yeah. But it's 
it's a lightweight bike. It's, it's a not lightweight. Like, it's not the air road. It's a lightweight non-aero bike, very similar to what the Ultimate was designed to be like. But it doesn't have a name yet. But it doesn't have a name. A more uh, general tech trend that Sai spotted throughout the Peloton was the switch to tubeless tyres and clinchers as well, but mainly tubeless, over the traditional tubulars. Seems that most riders are using them now, including Team Ineos, yeah. who've been steadfast you know, in the, in the back past of using uh, tube, tubulars. But no, apparently they're going to be using continental tubeless tyres throughout the entire race, even in the high mountains. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, when it's a bit of a heavier setup. Yeah. It makes sense because, and it's counterintuitive, and there's always someone in the comments who disagrees with this, but always. you're wrong. Um, <laughs> it, rolling resistance ma matters so much. Yeah. And we've shown previously in, in videos we've done that five watts makes more difference than a kilogram on a climb like Alpe d'Huez. And the rolling resistance benefit of a fast tubular setup uh, a fast tubeless setup is likely to be five watts or more. Oh, it easily outweighs five watts, yeah. Than, than tubular tyres, which which are slower. Yeah. And so it would make sense to use it. I mean, in real world, I've experienced this myself riding up Sakalobra. I tried to do really fast times on lightweight tubular tyres, switched to heavier, or slightly heavier, slightly, yeah. Tubeless setup and went sub 30. Incredible. Slightly heavier setup. So Ineos also, I think, exclusively using disc brakes this year, aren't they? Well, yeah, that, yeah, they are. Apart from, some of you may have noticed that um, some of the riders, including Tom Pidcock, had the old uh, Belide TT bike with rim brakes in the first TT. That's because, much like us and everyone else in the world, there are still procurement issues, mm. I think, with some tech, so they haven't been able to get the, the new bike for all the riders yet. So that means, in theory, their bike's going to be ever so slightly heavier than the rim brake versions, which means they're going to be fairly similar to the setup that you've got on your bike. Yes, yeah, so they're riding the Pinarello F. I'm lucky to have one as well. And You are lucky. Yes, and, and with uh, tubeless tyres and a power meter on it and, and Dura Ace, you're looking at well over the UCR limit. Mm. It's about probably for Geraint Thomas's size bike, which is the same as my size. We're basically the same. Basically uh, the same. Yeah. <laughs> that's where the similarities end. Is um, it's, you're looking at about 7.3, 7 7.2 kilograms. Okay, they've got 12 speed though. You haven't got 12 speed. No, yeah. 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 What's, what's an extra gear between friends? Yeah. It's nothing, is it? Um, what does make me wonder though, um, saying about them using exclusively disc brakes, are we going to see Pogaccia switch across the rim brakes? What do you reckon on that? Well, in the past, Pogaccia has ridden disc brakes and tubeless on the flatter days and then switched to tubulars and rim yeah. brakes in the mountains. But again, Cy was told on the ground. Cy was told. That apparently Pog is going to stick with tubeless and uh, disc brakes even in the high mountains. All this stuff Cy's been told so on the ground at Tour de France and told us. Yeah. Do you reckon he's just winding us up on any of it? Well, I mean, Cy also told us and was told <laughs> that Bissega had these amazing new, like super amazing prototype tyres that were going to be really grippy and yeah. really good in the time trial. It didn't age very well. That didn't age very well. Can we have the clip of Cy saying <laughs> this? <laughs> he has got exclusive limited edition tyres that you can't buy in the shops. Well, hopefully things go better for Bissiger in, in the second time trial. But these shoes are carbon and entirely custom moulded to his feet. They look incredible. Yeah, they look amazing. Yeah. They're like slippers. They're the creation of a guy called Mick Hapgood, yeah. who is a cycling biomedical podiatrist. I have literally no idea what that is, but it, it sounds like he'd know what he's doing. It, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we did some digging, found out that they're 178 grams, they are entirely 3D printed, which is amazing. That's like magic. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, and the, the closure on them is actually this really neat little uh, titanium pin that just holds stuff in place. But it's very neat and aero. So the advantages of these kind of shoes are that they're obviously lightweight. Yeah. They have less um, sort of frontal area to the wind and stuff, and they're very smooth, more so they're more aerodynamic. Yeah. Those obvious things, but. Apparently the biggest advantage is to do with sort of how stiff they are and how they support your foot and then how this translates into power transfer. Oh, but lots of people say stiff shoes don't matter, it's all like marketing. Yeah, kind of and, stuff. and yeah, you'd, you'd be right to question that. Yeah. You see a lot of a lot of claims about that. But I've heard on more than one occasion from people who have no vested interest, so people who don't buy, you know, people who don't sell or okay. make shoes, yeah. 
So for example, Phil Burt, when he was at uh, British Cycling working with the track team, yeah. he said that they found massive, measurable power transfer gains for pursuiters and yeah. sprinters like Chris Hoy, yeah. or it's pursuiters like Bradley Wiggins, using custom orthotic shoes. But the same sort of principles, like carbon molded yeah, to the molded foot. to your foot, so it's perfectly encasing your foot and, and supporting these, it. These sort of molded shoes do look incredible because you can see how they differ in shape in every little curve across mm. your foot. And I guess it's like an exact replica of the shape of your foot. Well, apparently Biscuit says they're really comfortable, but the, the interesting thing here, for me from a tech perspective, is the fact that they're 3D printed. I'd love to know more about that. Yeah. Because being 3D printed means that in theory, they could be more mass market we could have some. Oh, we could have, just think how fast we go. Rather than say like the Adam Hansen shoes we've seen in the past where it's like every pair has to be custom, yeah. painstakingly made. It's a lot harder to make those and on a, on, you know, on a I mean, with, a, with, a, with these shoes each, maybe we could be at the tour next year? I think we will be. Um, well, it's not only Bits and Go that's got fancy pants shoes, Wout Van Aert also has some, so take a look at these. So these incredible shoes were created by shoe artist, Caitlin Field. I've got to say, they're amazing. They do, I can't believe how good they amazing. are. They're yeah. so outrageous. They're actually inspired by the Dutch masters, Rembrandt, Vermeer, and Van Hoch. Who? Van Hoch. Not... Yeah. Not getting you. I don't, I, I don't know. That's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm not clued up on my. I'm reliably answers. informed. That is the correct pronunciation. Not Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. I've just been to America. I'm that's not... how they say it. Vincent Van Gogh. Yes, that's wrong. Oh. His name is Van Hoch. Okay. Well, I'm not going to argue with you on such sort of subjects. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're far more educated on that <laughs> than me. <laughs> Um, also, actually, on a non-Tour de France related subject, um, Amazon, it would appear, are rolling out cargo e-bikes for one of their distribution centres in the centre of London. I think it's Hackney. Now, presumably, it's not going to be like massive scale and it's just going to be replacing some of their um, diesel vans for deliveries. But That's I think good. it's a good thing, you know, yeah. reducing the pollution in a built up area and it could, I sort of guess, spark other areas doing it and taking it's out that probably just delivery. more efficient getting around London yeah. on a cargo e-bike than a van. It's less space. Especially when you consider... Nip through traffic. Nip through traffic. Loads of Amazon parcels are actually quite small. So on a e-cargo bike, you probably get quite a lot of deliveries done. Mm. Mm. Anyway, um, more hot tech next week. Thanks very much. Time now for comments of the week. Yeah, this is yes. an incredible part of the show. We've got some good comments. Right, first up this week. Um, so Ian Patterson says... I'm surprised Ollie of all people is talking about weight and then giving a value in kilograms as the unit. As he well knows, weight is a force, so should have a unit of newtons, brackets, capital N, close brackets. He shouldn't be talking about the mass of bikes if he's using kilograms. Well, I think Ian just needs to chill. I think Ian needs to chill. I think Ian also needs to actually sit down and read the Oxford English Dictionary because there are actually multiple definitions of the word weight and everybody knows what I'm talking about yeah um, I think the, the main thing to remember is that well weight is a body's relative mass mm -hmm. and um, well all the all the quantity of matter contained within it can if be represented so. by a force but I think it's also perfectly rational to represent it as kilograms I'm, I'm with you I think it's fine yeah and um, we'll accept your apology take next that week, Ian, Ian. Yeah. yes we expect a, a, a full apology in writing in the comments section right uh, next comment is from Benjamin Wolf who says uh, this is great <laughs> another one. wife one yeah my biggest regret this was under this was under the show where we were talking about biggest uh, things we regret buying oh, okay yeah like cycling purchase regrets yeah he says, uh, my biggest regret is telling my wife the actual cost of my bike. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, fair enough. It reminds me of that meme that you sent me that was the one where it was... Um... Oh, my <laughs> biggest... <laughs> yeah. I was so yeah. saying the biggest, my biggest fear is when, <laughs> when I die, my wife will sell my bikes for what I told her they cost. <laughs> I don't know. Or husbands. There's lots of, yes. there's lots of female partner. cyclists. Partner. partner. Yeah, yeah, partner. Swap out wife for partner and yeah. make it fair for everybody. Um, and then the last, well, next last comment we've got this week yeah. is, so this is under the, the ultimate bike van video mm -hmm. that, that we did over a week ago. And in that, we said that if the video gets 20,000 likes, we'll do our own like van conversion or team car conversion. Oh, that's good. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Uh, John McLeod has said, I'd love to see you guys do a team car conversion. 
How about a classic Mini capable of carrying four bikes? Yeah. Steve Moore replied to that, going, "No, Jaguar XFR S Sport Brake would be cooler." <laughs> it would be cool. I think it would be cooler, but I think it's a bit out of our budget. We blow the entire year's budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're filming everything on phones. I'd just be eating <laughs> baked beans for the rest yeah. of the year. Uh, okay. Well, great comments this week. Keep them coming. I can't wait to read them out next week. Yeah. Hmm. Time now for the Bike Vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes in the GCN app, and then we decide whether or not they're nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Alex is gonna ring the bell and they're in the Bike Vault forever. You can also play along at home and, and vote on all the bikes that are featured in, yeah. in the GCN app. Let me just check the bell's warmed up. It's primed and ready. So first up is last week's most super nice bike on the GCN app, and it's from Chris Watton, or Chris underscore Watton, and it is a DeRosa. Pininfarina SK. Look at that, oh, the paint on this bike is incredible. It is, isn't it? It's like it? an oil slick. It is, I'm also um, impressed with his, his, um, his Ikea storage. I've got a very similar storage I unit. I think we've all got that mm. thing. Yeah, <laughs> nice bike, um, it's in Biggie Smalls. Uh, cranks could be aligned, because the stand he's chosen to use, he could align the cranks. Um, yes. Valves are aligned, but it's a very cool looking bike. I'm going to super nice that. I think we can. Yeah, we'll, we'll super nice um, Top job. There's a few infractions, <clears throat> but I'm in a good mood. We'll let it slide. DJ Welling yeah. has got this bike. It's a Kinesis Athene. Athene? What do you make of that? Um, I like it. Do you like the little like pile of rocks he's used? to hold it up. Well, it is very good, but as I've said many times before, use a shadow stand, it's instant super nice from me. Yeah. Um, available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. It would, that photo would be better with the shadow stand. I think... I like the um, two-tone sort of bar tape where it changes design halfway up. I'm going super nice on that one. Super nice, all right, yeah. super nice it is. Yeah. Um, go on then, who's uh, next? Ben Sampson, 86. Uh, he's got a specialized tarmac SL7. S works fancy pants. Wow! Oh, yeah, I like that. Is that is it grey or silver or chrome? I can't decide. Ooh. Or I mean, he's got he's got bike. he's got ceramic speed fancy pants thing on there. He's also got the new Jura Ace power meter. A lot of the World Tour teams don't have the new Jura Ace. I, I actually power wanted meter. one, but couldn't get one. Yeah, I wanted one. <laughs> yeah. Get one. Okay. Um, um, I hope the bike is lent very carefully because I would be very upset to see it slide and ding the top tube. I like his speed play pedals. I mean, that is a that is a super nice, isn't it? Yeah, are we super nice that? Why not? Yeah. God, I know. I've only been back from a honeymoon a few days. Super nice everything. Um, next up is from Scotty Broom. Brom, sorry. Scotty Brom. Um, with a Trekimonda from 2021, slightly jaunty angle. Taking the bottles off, left the saddlebag on. The crank is level, but the wrong way round. Yeah, oh, there's slightly a bit, of, bit of grub, me. bit of bit of grease on the cassette in the lower portion. You can see. Uh, to be fair to him, it looks like he's not been using his easy gears. He's not been using. Clearly, a good rider. Kudos to that. Yeah, oh. just grinds away in the hard <laughs> gears, hard man. <laughs> Just rides downhill all the time. I mean, kudos there. Credit yeah. where credit's due, but it's yeah. a jaunty angle, as Alex says. The wheels aren't aligned. The cassette's a bit dirty. The uh, yeah, yeah. Gubbins, nice. gubbins under the saddle. It's, it's just nice. It's nice. Yeah. Um, next up is from Matthew J. Howitt with a BMC Time Machine 02 from 2018. Ooh. Can you believe that's from 2018? Because it looks it looks quite different to like your super modern time travel bikes, doesn't it? Gold chain. Oh yeah, fist pump. Um, one thing that, that is bothering me is he's losing at least sort of two watts with not having a, a valve cover on the rear wheel. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. That would crack me. Yeah, two watts. Absolutely crack me. Yeah. Um, I like his custom cockpit though. He's got drag to zero extensions on there. And Super um, sort of high, um, high front end on the back. Yeah, a bit of a Prain Mantis position yeah. going on. He's also got a tri-rig Omni front brake. That's another custom mod he's put on there to make it quicker. He's got the Speedplay Aero pedals. Yeah. Um, fast tyres on there. Speedy Boy tyres. Mm. Well, I think it's cool. I think that's a super nice. I mean, I love TT bikes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, super nice. I like what he's done with that. It's good. Yeah. We've got a pre single, big, single big layback though on the saddle. Yeah, but he's got single speed as well. It's one by. Yeah. But then he's got the um, he's got like an aero chain catcher fitted as well. That's a cool little mod. I like that. Okay, there we go. 
Sounds like you two could be best friends. I think it? I think we would be very good friends. Yeah. Okay. Um, Steve B. Merckx. Yes. What's he got? Uh, Dream Build. What bike is it? Oh, it is a Merckx. Oh, it's a Merckx. He oh, loves it so he's much. Done. He's he's put it in his uh, username. Yeah. In his username. Yeah. Or it could be someone called Merckx with a bike called Steve. Ooh. That is a cool paint That's job. That's all custom painted, isn't it? I can't say I've ever seen a bike painted this way, and it looks incredible. He's got those nice Bora WTO wheels on as well, tubeless. Yeah. Ooh. That's quite a setup, that bike. Oh, this is super nice, isn't it? That yeah, one? super well, nice. It's been, it's been a strong week. I give it a bit of, That's better. It's a bit of a half attempt. Right, last um, submission for this week. It's a long buy vault. It is a long buy vault. I added a couple of extras in. Oh, I was right. feeling generous. I went down into the vault and got oh, lost got, in there. We've got a Merlin. Uh, from, it's from Pedal Dammit. Pedal Dammit. 1997. God, I was just seven years old then. Who'd have thought? Hmm. Um, it's got the American flag in the background. Now, because I've just returned from America, I can tell you that flag's the wrong way around. But it's the correct way for the people looking on the road. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, what do you think of the bike? Um, it's well presented. Yeah. Uh, valve, I can't even see the valves, it's quite far back. They're, they're, they're in the right position. It's big and smalls, no accessories. I like it, you know, I like that. I think We're that's getting a super nice I, I think that. Finish on a positive note? I think that's a super nice. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> it's a super nice under one condition. Okay. The owner has to correctly pronounce Vincent van Gogh <laughs> for the rest of their days. Seems a reasonable request yeah. to me. Um, okay. Otherwise, if you don't, if you say Van Gogh, it's rescinded. We'll retract the yeah. super nice. The bike is coming out of the vault, mm. going in the bin. Forever. We set it on fire. <laughs> okay. Um, well, on that note, we'll end the GCN Tech Show. It's been incredible to be back. Thanks very much. Um, same time next week, I guess? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, don't forget, head over to the GCN app, vote on our poll, and as usual, get some banging comments in the comments section down below. We might, um, might pick them out next week. Mm. Cool. Love you, bye! <laughs> Don't love you, I'll see ya. <laughs>